I was cleaning up my basement and I found a whole bunch of old paint cans and you're probably like me, you've never really thought about what a paint can is made of, but I thought this was interesting. I found this one in particular and notice the top of the can, it's got that distinctive color of rust, which we know is iron three oxide. So I thought we could use this as a great example of a synthesis reaction because we've got evidence of what we actually created. So if this is iron oxide, that means we must have started out with the element iron and iron is the main component that's in steel. And so we imagine that that is what our paint cans are made of. So if this paint can has been sitting here for a really long time, I mean like, you know, 10 years, we know that the iron in the paint can is very slowly reacting with the oxygen that's in the air. And the two elements are coming together to make the compound iron three oxide. And so that's what we see on the top of the can. And we can use that as a great example of a synthesis reaction. In this section, we will focus on predicting products of synthesis reactions. There's several different ways to describe a synthesis reaction, but most commonly we describe it as when two substances merge to become one substance. These are often two elements that are coming together to make one compound. If we use letters, we could show this as A plus B becomes the product AB. We could also describe it visually, showing a blue circle coming together with a yellow circle to make a combination of the two circles put together as one. In the demonstration that you just saw, we saw some old paint cans that had turned rusty. And if we wanted to describe this using words, we would say, that the paint cans contained iron and they were reacting with oxygen in the air. Over time, those two elements slowly came together to make the compound iron three oxide. What we want to do next is show these different elements and compounds in a balanced equation. Iron, of course, is Fe, and remember that oxygen is a diatomic element, meaning we always show it with a little subscript 2 after it, meaning two atoms have come together to make a molecule. You'll also notice that I've included states of matter here. The S after the iron stands for solid because the iron was in a solid state, and the G after the oxygen stands for gas. When we go to predict the product of this chemical reaction, it's important to remember your ion charges. The iron three means that we have an Fe with a positive three charge and oxide is a negative two. So you wanna stop and think about how do we make a neutral compound out of those two ions? And the answer would be Fe2O3. And of course, rust is in a solid state and that's why you see the little s after the formula. One thing that might bother you about the way that equation is shown right now is that the atoms are not staying consistent um, as you go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. For instance, on the left-hand side, there's only one iron shown, but on the right, there's two. And for the oxygen, there's two on the left, but then three on the right. What we've learned in chemistry is that when you write an equation, it's important to balance the atoms on the left and the right hand side. So we include coefficients. So you might want to stop for a moment and just think about how would I balance this equation? And the answer to that would look like this. We can include a four in front of the iron, a three in front of the O2, and then a two in front of the iron three oxide. And now notice that we've got four iron atoms on each side and six oxygen atoms on each side, and we've got a nice balanced equation. At this point, I'd like you to practice four synthesis reactions with me. Feel free to stop the video and pause for a moment as you try to predict the products of these reactions. I'd also like you to try to balance the equation, so we're putting a lot of skills together as we do this. In our first example, I am taking potassium metal, which is a solid, and reacting it with chlorine gas. 
If we merge these two elements together, the name of the compound would be potassium chloride. We want to write a formula that is neutral, and if the potassium has a positive one and chloride has a negative one, we know that the compound would be written as KCl. It's important to balance the equation, so stop for a moment and think about what the coefficients would look like. And the final equation would look like what you see here, with two potassium atoms on each side, and then, of course, two chlorine atoms on each side. In our second example, we take solid aluminum and react it with oxygen, which would be a gas in the atmosphere. If we take these two elements and merge them to make one compound, we would have a compound called aluminum oxide. Stop and think about your formula. The ion charges need to cancel out so that your ionic compound is neutral. Our final product would be shown as Al2O3. And some students get lost with the states of matter. You'll notice I put solid after the aluminum oxide. And a lot of this is common sense. If you think about a piece of aluminum just sitting on a countertop and reacting with oxygen from the air, the final product would still be in the solid state, which is why I include the S after it. So much of these states of matter you can figure out just using your common sense. Of course, that's not a balanced equation, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I've got the same number of atoms of each element shown on the left and the right which would look something like this. In our third example, let's take a piece of magnesium ribbon, so that's in the solid state, and it reacts with oxygen in the air. Think about the name of the product first. I, I always like to think of it in terms of words before I try to write the formula. The name of this compound would be magnesium oxide. Think about your charges. Magnesium is a positive two, oxide is a negative two, and when that cancels out, we get an MgO. The magnesium oxide would be in the solid state. Think about whether this is a balanced equation or not. When I look at it right now, the oxygens are not the same number on the left and the right, which means I would have to go back and balance the equation, which would look like this. Our final example for a synthesis reaction is magnesium metal reacting with nitrogen. If that were to happen, the name of the compound would be magnesium nitride. Again, I always like to think of it in words before I try to write the formula. Magnesium nitride would have magnesium as a positive two, and the nitride is N with a negative three. Let's make that compound neutral. We can see the formula Mg3N2, and that magnesium nitride would be in the solid state. Think about whether or not this equation is balanced. And as I look at it, the nitrogens look okay. We've got two on the left and two on the right, but the magnesium would have to change. And so I'm going to add a coefficient in front of the magnesium to make it look like this to get a balanced equation. So those are four good examples of synthesis reactions. This concludes our synthesis tutorial.